Deserted cities have always been a running theme of post-apocalyptic films. I Am Legend, Mad Max, The Matrix, and more. I've always loved these kinds of films, but with the recent pandemic, they've hit a little bit too close to home. Homes like London, Dhaka, Mumbai, Beijing, and many more. Just look at how empty they've been. If there's something that this COVID-19 pandemic has shown us is that sometimes when it comes to science, what it predicts can and will occasionally threaten our entire world and a way of life. And if you thought that COVID-19 was crazy, what if we told you that climate change was crazier? There's proof that the impact of climate change has been accelerating in the last few years. The last decade was the hottest ever recorded on land and in the oceans. We have seen seven category five hurricanes, the strongest you can get in the Atlantic in just the past five years. And the amount of ice left in the polar region in the summers, pretty pathetic. But we're not gonna lie to you, climate science isn't simple because how the earth works isn't simple. But then how can climate scientists be so sure that things are getting dangerous? Well, in this Think video, we're gonna help you understand the answers to these questions by helping you know what climate change is, why the world is warming up, and how we humans are causing it. We're joined by the professor and department head of emergency management at Jacksonville State University in the USA, Dr. Tanvir Islam. Just a small request, if you click on the subscribe button below and the bell icon, you'll get notifications every time we release a video. Climate models strongly suggest that global temperatures have risen throughout the past 10,000 years. But doesn't that mean today's extreme warming is just part of that natural incline? No. Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, which we humans started in the 18th century, the rate of temperature rise has surpassed all previous records. This was the increase from 10,000 years ago to 1800. And then this was the increase from 1800 to today. You don't need to be a scientist to see this clear correlation, but obviously it helps. And it's us. We were responsible for this. Mass industrialization built on fossil fuels like coals, oil and natural gas that started in the UK and US before spreading to the rest of Europe and the world. The world's population has tripled in the last century and we're clearing forests en masse to grow crops for us to eat. Since the 1800, all of this activity, which increases year on year, emits gases, especially CO2 and methane, that sticks around in the atmosphere. We burn fossil fuels and release carbon that has been stored for millions of years or more. These greenhouse gases are like a warm blanket around the Earth's atmosphere, trapping in the heat of the sun. If you've ever actually been inside a greenhouse and felt how hot it can be in there, it's a bit like that. As this blanket gets thicker, the earth gets hotter. And as the earth gets hotter, well, remember we said that climate change is complicated? It makes that complicated system do things that aren't going to be good for me and you. And look, it's true that climate change is a natural process on earth. All changes. Since the beginning of life itself, the earth has had periods where it's been covered by huge ice sheets. There was even a time when there was little or no ice at the poles and a massive forest on the continent of Antarctica. We've seen five of these ice ages, and it's said that we live in the last ice age and in the warm bit between two glacial periods, what is called the Holocene Epoch. The world warmed five to 10 degrees Celsius from the Pleistocene Epoch before it. All the civilizations of the world and the origin of agriculture has started in this Holocene period. However, the Earth's temperature also fluctuated during this epoch. For example, from 1300 to about 1850, the world, especially Europe, was very cold, also known as the Little Ice Age. The Earth's average temperature dropped by about two degrees Celsius during this time. The London's Thames River would freeze over every winter. One thing that scientists found was that you could use CO2 levels to accurately show the Earth's temperature as far back as at least the last million years. You do this by drilling core samples from deep underneath the ice sheets of Greenland and Antarctica and examining the gases trapped in ice cores. And that's where we're in trouble. You see, the amount of CO2 in 2020 was about 417 parts per million, which is higher than at any point in at least the last million years. If CO2 is a predictor of the Earth's temperature, well, what does this huge spike mean? Well, we're already seeing more cyclones, floods, droughts, and snowstorms. We've seen this increase happening in Bangladesh, India, the US, all across the world. 
but more worrying is the fact that we actually don't know exactly how it will mess up our climate. You see, this huge increase in CO2 is disrupting the Earth's natural climate cycles or climate clock. Super sensitive and yes, complex system. We've never had this much global warming at this rate ever. It's so serious that scientists have unofficially said we're ending the Holocene era we were in and entering a new era. The Anthropocene, anthro being the word for human. Our impact on the world has incited significant geographical change, potentially an apocalypse. Look, we know for sure now that there's only one way to save our home. We need to come together to reverse the Earth's CO2 levels back to a natural balance as soon as possible. The Earth's population growth seems to be stabilizing as we've taken action collectively. But now we need to cut our use of fossil fuels, stop deforestation and destroying our oceans, while also reducing the greenhouse gases associated with farming. We all have to do our part, individually and as a single planet community. Although we can't guess exactly which cities will be hit first and the hardest, Scientists can make some predictions. All of us for the first time have seen how a global pandemic can turn our lives upside down. Yet climate change has the potential to be even more disruptive. Not just to our great grandchildren's lives, but it affects us. It's an imminent and frankly scarier threat. And everyone from scientists to activists to businesses to ordinary citizens like you and me are being compelled to do more. And the Think Team is not an exception.